Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're talking about unbundling a bundle. Now first you need to know what a bundle is in order for you to know whether you want to unbundle one or not. A bundle is really a collection of program files, samples, pianos, all collected together, organized in a way, and produced in a neat package that you can then transport, archive, or share with other people who have the same Nord keyboard. Or, like I said, archive it for yourself is fine too. Now, to create a bundle, you simply use the Nord Sound Manager when it's connected to your keyboard, and then you can select multiple items here and then select Bundle Upload. That will create a bundle on whatever you have selected, the maximum number of components or programs or samples or anything that you can bundle. The maximum number is 25. If you want to see details on some of this, I have that available in my courses. I also talk uh, extensively about the Nord Sound Manager in other videos here on YouTube as well. You can check that out up here with a link, and I'll put a link in the description below. So it's a nice way to stay organized. Or let's say, for example, you're working on the Nord User Forum and you want to upload something that includes both a sample, a particular piano, and all your settings, and you want the whole thing to be positioned in a way that it's exactly the way you created it. Because if you don't store it as a bundle, you have to include the sample separately, you have to indicate what piano is used, and if that person doesn't have that sample or that piano loaded, then they have to go and hunt it down and reconnect it manually. It's a lot of hard work. But when you produce a bundle, it makes it super easy to say, this is the program I have in its entirety. Uh, use that, and then it'll load on your keyboard and all will be well with the world. All right, so now that you know what a bundle is and what it's good for, unbundling it can be very handy because once you have a bundle created, you might say to yourself, well, I wish I knew what's in that bundle. I, I, it has a name, but I don't know all the components. It turns out it's very, very simple. First, let's do it on Windows, then we'll do it on Mac, and we'll wrap this up. You'll walk away from this video now forever knowing how to unbundle a bundle. And um, when I found this out, it was like, wow, this is almost revolutionary and drop-dead simple. On Windows, it really is simple. All you need to do is take a look at your file and rename it. So by renaming it, I mean you're going to add an extension. In this case, you're going to add to it, whatever the name is, dot zip, zip. I guess I said that funny. Um, if you change the file name extension, say yes, okay. So now it turns itself into a recognizable zip file that you can then just double click and look inside or drag these out and use them or repurpose them in some other way. But the most important thing, usually, why people want to unbundle a bundle is to see the components and kind of get a bird's eye view of what's going on. So within this bundle, it's uh, then organized in pianos. In this case, this is a bundle for the Stage 3, so it's organized this way for the Stage 3. It might be organized slightly different for your keyboard if you're not using a Stage 3. Like a Wave 2 doesn't have the ability to play uh, pianos, so you're not going to see a folder called Pianos in a Wave 2 bundle. All right, so there's the piano. So if I open that up, then it further subcategorizes them by type. So I've got my claves here. And then here I have my grands, any grands that might have been used, and any uprights. All right, and then these are the programs. So it even organizes it by bank. I have a program or these three programs in bank M, subdivisions by Rush, The Who, Won't Get Fooled Again, Tom Sawyer, another great Rush song. Here are all my other Rush songs that I've been working on and worked on. And then, so these are the banks, Bank M, O, and P. All right, those are the programs. Then the sample libraries. Any samples that I used on any of those programs are here as well. I've got a distorted guitar for one of the programs, and then I'm using the spoken sample subdivisions, which is yours truly going subdivisions on that song, which is really cool because uh, I couldn't find the actual sample on the internet for subdivisions. Anyway, all right, that's Windows. Let's take a look at Mac. Mac is just about as easy, but there are, well, there is one more step. So let's take a look at this one here, this program bundle section two or selection two. Again, just simply rename it by adding dot zip to the end of it. It's going to say, are you sure you want to add dot zip? Say yes, use that. It'll turn it into a very familiar zip-like icon you will be tempted to double click here on the Mac and you will get this error message, unable to expand the program bundle selection. 
That's because it doesn't quite like that zip file format. We need something a little bit more powerful or a little bit more compatible to open it. For that, I'm using something called the Unarchiver. So I'm going to right click and open with the Unarchiver, I guess 4.33. All right, then you do get your folder. Within your folder, you get all the same components. You've got the piano, uh, the pianos, I should say, in their categories, the program in their selected banks, and then any samples that were used. So now you have a bird's eye view of how to work with your bundles. Before I go too much further on that, let's talk about how you get the Unarchiver program here on your Macintosh. So you can open up a browser, do a quick Google search for the Unarchiver uh, for Mac OS is what I like to add to that. And then you should see a link for the unarchiver.com. Click on that. You'll have the opportunity to download it directly from the Mac store or directly here. Click download and it'll come right to your downloads folder. And at that point, it's going to be a very familiar installer program, a .dmg file. Double click that, drag the Unarchiver app over to your applications folder. And just like that, you'll have the Unarchiver in its place, ready to go and for use. Again, if you have a bundle on the Mac, just add .zip to it, right click and open with the Unarchiver and you'll have that opened up in no time at all. While I'm on this topic, if you were to look at the program settings in particular, and you found one that is interesting, you can actually drag this to another file application, which is called the Nord File Viewer. And I have a whole video on the file viewer, but once you drag this program, which is going to be compatible with stage two, stage three, so far as of this video, that's the compatibility, uh, the keyboards that are compatible with the file viewer. But once you drag that file over to the file viewer, it's like magic. It shows you all the specific settings of that file. And since we're talking about the Nord file viewer, it's now compatible with bundles, synth bundle files, song bundle files, as well as backup files. Here I am loading in one of my bundles and you can see it displays all the programs from within that bundle and I can select the programs on the left side and it'll give me the details of each of those programs on the right side. Like I mentioned earlier, the Nord user forum, people put bundles up there occasionally to share music and share sounds. You can download those bundles and then if you want to break into them specifically to take a look inside, you can do that now. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this was, in a sense, somewhat revolutionary when I discovered it. I actually discovered this technique from the Nord User Forum. It has been a handy resource, and I highly recommend you check that out as well, especially if you own a Nord keyboard. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'll keep bringing these interesting tips as I find them along the way, things I think you'll be interested in and learning. Thanks.